Hi, Best Buds. It's Kathy with Kathy's Garden, and I'm so happy that you've joined me today. Today is hashtag Kathy Sewing Happiness, in which we'll have our drawing at the end of the video. Our video today is about one page double slant pocket booklets for our junk journals. But first, let's have our shout out to Michelle, Salina, Novelle, Sue, Monique, Teresa, Helen, and Sparkles Creation Art. I appreciate each and every one of you. Set this aside. I have a piece of uh, digital, I have a digital here, and it is approximately 10 and a half by 8 inches, and I have coffee dyed the back, but you don't have to coffee dye the back. And let's go ahead and let's fold it. First we're going to fold it in half this way, I'm going to give it a good crease. Then we're going to fold it once again this way and give it a good crease. All right, now we're going to open it up and we are going to fold. Now I'm going to fold because I have an up and a down and I want it to be right way because it, there's letters here and there's a dog and I would like it to be that way. So I'm going to take these two bottom corners and I'm going to fold them up in the center right where we creased. Okay, so just pushing this down like this. Alrighty, now we're going to be pulling this up just like that. So I want to cover this. I don't want it to be like that. I want to give it a little interest. Now in one of my examples, I used some book page. In another example, I actually used a cloth hanky as my, instead of my paper, I used a cloth hanky. And I'll show you that way that looks soon as we get this done. So what I want to do right here is I'm going to take this part and I am going to place my glue on my piece of paper just like this. Okay. And then I'm going to lay it down on what I want it to be covered with. So I want that grid so I'm just going to lay it right like this. Press it down. I am going to go ahead while I'm doing this. I'm going to glue these this, these corners down. <laughs> I had a hard time getting that out. Glue these corners down. Just like that. Alrighty, so now we've got that. We've got our backing on it. We've got our little corners glued down. Let's go ahead and trim it out. So I'm simply going to cut my paper that I've chosen to back it with. I'm going to trim it just like this. I'm going to fold it so that I can trim this part. It's just much easier for me if I do it this way. And trim it out. Whoops. Let's unfold it here. So let's trim it here. I think we're pretty good here. Oh, I might need to just a little bit maybe. Okay. Now let's see what do we look like now. We look just like this. Okay. I am going to fold this. Hopefully it folds nicely because we just added glue on that paper. There we are. It's folded. Oh my goodness, that's cute already. Now let's take my corner rounder. I'm just going to round my corners. Now I like to ink. I like the look it gives. So I am going to use my vintage photo and I'm going to ink this up as I tell you what hashtag Kathy Sewing Happiness is all about. It's you helping me spread happiness through simple acts of kindness towards other people. Letting them in line of traffic. Letting someone go ahead of you at the grocery store because you have 20 items and they only have two. We don't know what everyone's going through and sometimes all someone needs is a simple act of kindness from someone just to keep them going. That's what we need to do, guys. We need to just keep going. So, if you would like to enter into the drawing. Now, if you enter today, 
<coughs> it is for, <coughs> excuse me, it is for next Sunday's drawing. And you simply tell me your act of kindness in the comment section of the most recent hashtag Kathy Sewing Happy Fit Happiness video. If you choose not to tell me what your act of kindness is, that's okay. Just simply type in spreading happiness. Then make sure you check back next Sunday so that if your name is pulled out of the fishbowl, then you can give me your address and I can get you your happy mail. Without your address, I can't send you your happy mail, even if your name is pulled out of the fishbowl. And that's all there is to it, guys. So check back if you enter. Check back next Sunday to see if your name has been pulled out of the fishbowl. All right, I am folding the grid paper and some coffee dyed paper. I folded it because what I want to do is I want to trim around. I'm going to use my pencil. I'm going to trim around this little booklet right here. Just simply just like that and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it out now I folded it okay so it's folded I folded my paper I placed it in here fold side in we're making some little pages for our booklet so I'm just going to trim it now I am going to probably be cutting this smaller but I find that <clears throat> this is the easiest way for me to get my paper at least close to what I need it to be for my project. So I'm just going to trim this out. I'm putting two pieces in which will give us four pages. Plus you're going to have the front and back cover of the booklet itself. So you actually have six areas in which you can write items or things in. So what I want to do, because that fits absolutely perfectly and I don't want it to fit perfectly, I want it to fit within my booklet. So I'm just trimming a little off and then I'm looking at it and seeing mm, I want a little bit more. Now I was, if you saw me, I turned this around. That's because I always cut, if I have a chance, with the folded part on the bottom. So as the as you cut it, like if I was cutting with scissors, the fold would be away from me, and I would cut into the fold. If you cut this way, sometimes pages shift and they become wonky, and then they won't be straight. So it always helps if because this is starting here and cutting down this way. That's why I put the fold here. But if I was using my scissors, I'd turn the fold around, put the fold at the top, and I'd cut into the fold. So you want to cut into the fold to keep your pages as straight as possible. Sometimes things still, you know, mess up. But you've got a you got a better chance if you cut into your fold. I'm rounding my corners here. I'm looking for my my little sponge. I'm just going to brush my sponge onto my newly cut it cut pages just to give it a little, you know, something something. So now we have our pages here. Now if you have a large um, stapler, you could go ahead and squish this in. Why on earth? Hang on, let me see what's going on. There we go. I had My screen was covered. I couldn't see what I was doing. <laughs> so <laughs> I couldn't see what you were seeing, what I was doing. So if you have a large enough stapler, you could staple this and not sew it. I like to sew my signatures, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew it. But before we sew it, I'm going to take this apart like this. See, it folds in just like this, and these are our pockets. These are our beautiful slant pockets on the front and back cover of our little booklet. I'm going to open it up just like this so that I'm able to grab my sari. And this is sari silk from Crimson Heart Studios, and I will list her name down below in case you forget by the time this video is over you can go down there just all kind whoops all kinds of of sorry now that's because there's a seam there okay let's try that again it wouldn't rip past the seam of course not it's sewn so let's try that again and let's open this back up I'm going to trim that seam off. 
Now let's do that one more time. And this time it will rip until it gets to a seam again. And then it will stop. But let's just tear this like this. Oh, that's plenty. I don't need any more than that. I'm going to take this side. One side is not better than the other. I just decided on this side. And I'm just removing the little strings that have occurred when I ripped the sari in half. And what I want to do is I'm going to use my hot glue gun. You can use Fabric Tech. Um, I just use hot glue in my videos because it's quick, it's easy, and it's just great for me in a video. So I've got my hot glue, and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down. I do hot glue in sections because hot glue does dry very quickly. Now I'm using my finger to make these little pleats, I guess you could say, or you could get a card. I'm looking for a card, something like this, and you could push it if you're using, if you don't want to use your fingers with hot glue, or if you're using fabric tech, it will work the same way. I have lots of videos in which I use the little card to push, but then I kind of find that my fingers are super handy, and so I just tend to grab I just tend to grab my fingers <laughs> and use them. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just smushing, literally. I'm just smushing the sorry silk up. And it just looks like this. So it's kind of pleated, but it's not anywhere, you know, it's not even pleats or anything. I just call it smushing. I just smush it on. And I really, really like how it looks. And I'm just working my way down the other side. So a little bit of hot glue and the sari on top of the hot glue and then just pinching. Just pinching with my fingers right like that. Okay and then a little bit more. I almost reached the other side and there we are. A little smush. There we go. I've got a little bit more fray, fraying happening. I'm just going to trim it. I'm going to trim this off right here. I'm going to trim it off right here. And then let's look at see how this is looking. So let's put it back together. Oh yeah. That's, oh, isn't that pretty together? That's so pretty. Now I have some butterflies here and I thought, oh, it would be really sweet if uh, we put a butterfly on here and I'm just not sure what color I want. Do I want the blue or do I want the white? That blue is beautiful, isn't it? And I also have some labels. Now these labels are from, by J. Lee Lu. I had to think for just a second and let's see. What one do I want? I don't know. Oh, I could get away with doing a really big one on this one. Oh, that looks adorable. I am going to grab my sponge and I'm going to ink it up just a little bit because my butterfly is not inked and I just want to ink it up just a little bit. It takes away that white color. Oh, and I haven't inked up my, my label. I want to get that done. So then I want to just place it, maybe something like this. I'm going to grab my art glitter glue, and that is the glue that I use to glue on the grid paper. I'm just going to add it right here. And then I'm just going to add the glue onto my butterfly. I'll put my butterfly at an angle like it's flying. And then what I want to do is actually, I'm going to put a little paper clip right here so I can get my bling on here and I'm just going to add my bling right there. So let's quickly sew in our signature. Now any of you that are new at sewing in signatures, I have a little tip that's really easy and it makes sewing in a signature fun. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to get yourself a piece of paper and a scratch piece of paper. I'm cutting this. It's about one inch. I'm going to fold it in half just like this. 
Okay. Now, the more you sew in signatures, the better you'll get at it. So, you know, some people say, well, I've never done it, or I've only done it once, or I don't like to do it, or it scares me. If the more you do it, you know, practice makes perfect, the better you'll get at it. So there's nothing to be afraid of. It's just, you know, this little trick here is going to save you a lot. So you measure it to the, be the size of your whatever the whatever you're sewing your your signature into ours happens to be what I call a pamphlet then you t turn the two ends together and you fold again crease it then do it again this end to this end so you fold it in thirds you open it up and where your folds where your folds intersect is where you put a little dot Okay, so I have dots there where my folds intersect. I make sure that <laughs> you're right side up. You get your papers, and I think I want my harder, firmer paper to be on the inside. I want the grid paper to be on the out. I'm going to place it in here oh, as best I can. You know, I eyeball it to see it's, if it's even. It's not going to stick out once I get it closed. I'm going to bring in some paper clips. I'm actually going to use my smaller paper clips today. I think they will hold it tighter because I only have a couple of pieces of paper that I'm sewing into this signature. Okay, so we've got that. Now we're going to add our little template right in the center, right where it creases. And we're just going to add two paper clips to hold it firmly. I have a piece of packing and it just looks like that. It's a piece of foam. I have my awl, aka pokey tool. You're going to hold your mm, booklet or your journal or your your little, what I call it, a pamphlet and you're going to hold your awl straight up and down. You don't want it going crooked. You don't want it going any straight up and down. You're going to hold this as close together as you can and get your awl down in there. Look and see where your holes are and punch a hole exactly where you have marked it all the way through. You've got to come all the way through. Do you see my awl right, right there? It's right there. See it? you got to come up through. you got to go all the way through. So do the next one straight up and down. The next one straight up and down okay now move that or it fall off my desk remove this don't remove the others get yourself your thread whether you're using um, book binding thread like I have here or whether you're using um, embroidery thread whatever it is that you choose you're going to get yourself your needle and we're going to say, this is how I measure, one, I've got my thread, I'm going one, two, three, okay? And then I'm giving it a cut. Now, if you're going to put a dangle on the end, you're going to want to give yourself some more. I'm going to have extra here, but I'd much rather have extra than not enough. You start in the center, you go through the hole, and when you come, don't pull it all the way through. Hang on to it with your thumb. Go on the outside, and you're going in another one. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Go in the next hole. Press it through. It's going to come right on out. Pull it. Look at it. Make sure it's not caught on anything. I've got some sorry silk here again. And then we're going to go all the way to the other one, whichever one you're in. You're going all the way to the end, and you're going to pull it through. Now you're going to notice that this string is on one side, you're going to want the string that you're going to put back through that center hole. You want it to come over here on the other side of that thread. So I'm putting it through. I'm moving this center over a little. And I'm pulling it just like this. And then there you are. You have it on either side. Now all you have to do is you're going to need to snip your um, needle off. And then once again, always check to make sure it's not caught on anything. I still have these sorry threads <laughs> coming out. It is not caught on anything. Go ahead and give it a knot. Now mine is waxed, 
uh, binding, book binding thread. If you're using embroidery thread, I always put a little bit of glue right here, leave it open while it dries, then you can shut it, but sometimes the embroidery thread will come undone and then your signature will become loose. All right, so look at what we have here. Isn't this adorable? Now, of course, you've got a pocket here, you've got a pocket here, and then inside we have your pages. Now, you can for further, you could further decorate, you could maybe do some more uh, butterflies, you could do some stamping, whatever it is that you want to decorate inside, but I just think this turns out adorable. I actually was going to put another butterfly and another, another label on the back, but we don't need to do that. You understand what I was talking about. Let me show you another one that I made. This is the one in which I used the book page, and I did, I used a little paper clip to keep it closed, so it looks like that. It's so cute, right? I just think that's adorable. These are shabby dabby doo -dah numbers. These um, fussy cut butterflies are from mm, something art. I will list it down below. And then, of course, the sari comes from Crimson Heart Studios. These are shabby dabby doo -dah tags. And I just think this turns out absolutely precious. Let me show you the one that I made using a hanky. Now, this one, because the hanky is the hanky, has an embroidery, and on the corner that it was, at the angle that it was, I could not make my pockets go this way. I had to turn it so my pockets were upside down. It's okay too. So I've got my pockets in here. I've got it, my pages. I put a few more pages in this one and the pocket goes on this way, upside, you know, it's upside tuck. And I just think that turned out precious. So you could do the same thing and turn it to a doily. And then if you have something like I did where you're your embroidery or your decoration that they put on your hanky that you have makes it so you have to invert your pockets. You can do that just as well as I did and things will stay in there perfectly. So let's go ahead and let's have our drawing for Happy Mail this week. Who has won Happy Mail? This is my way of paying it forward for helping me spread happiness. I've got a winner right here. So let's open it up and see who has won this week. Marie Joyner. Marie, you have won happy mail from me to you as my way of paying it forward. I do hope that you have enjoyed this video. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. I invite you to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll see you there, guys. Bye now.